What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of All Around Athlete. Today, we are tackling the Mount Everest of sports debates. Yes, we are talking about Michael Jordan versus LeBron James and who deserves to be considered the greatest of all time. With a recent ESPN documentary called The Last Dance, focusing on Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, I felt like this is the best time to reopen this debate. Hit him with the intro. When you dive into a topic like this, things can get pretty confusing very quickly. It's difficult because you can't help but compare with nostalgia and emotions. And comparing someone like LeBron, who is still playing, to the ongoing legacy that is Michael Jordan, which expanded beyond time and space. Space? Is that time for another Space Jam reference? No, no, get that out of here. We've already done a Space Jam reference. Besides, both of these guys are gonna be in a version of that movie, so let's move on to what we were talking about. If we are going to get into the numbers and statistical side of the MJ versus LeBron debate, things get very messy very quickly. Let me explain. Physically speaking, Michael Jordan and LeBron are built completely different. Michael stands somewhere around six foot five, six foot six inches tall, and around 200 pounds soaking wet. Now LeBron, on the other hand, is six foot eight, 235 pounds. Because of their size differences, the two play very different positions and both play a very different type of basketball. This is why many of the old timers like Magic, Bird, and a lot of people from our parents' generation have a difficult time comparing the two athletes. Michael would undoubtedly make anyone's all-time starting five at shooting guard with LeBron at the 3 4 spot right next to him. One big difference I'd like to mention is a fact that many of you already know, and that being LeBron came directly out of high school where Michael played three years in college at the University of North Carolina. I bring this up because LeBron essentially had a three-year head start on Michael when you think about NBA statistics and what would have been the first couple years of MJ's prime. Now, with that being said and kind of setting the stage for their careers as a whole, I'm going to spare us the time of going into each individual stat like field goal percentage, three-point percentage, steals, rebounds, etc. Let's focus on some more important topics. In terms of personal accomplishments, let's first look at scoring titles which is the award given to a player with the most points at the end of each NBA season. Though LeBron James has had a very impressive scoring career, he has only been able to snag a scoring title one time. Comparatively, Michael Jordan has 10 scoring titles. In nine out of those 10 years, he was also named to the all-defensive first team. LeBron has only been named to that list five times. Many have tried to make a case for LeBron's defensive strength because of his ability to cover multiple positions with his size and speed. Though I would say LeBron has focused on defense a lot more in recent years, I mean, he did have one of the most famous, if not the most famous blocks in NBA Finals history. You would think that someone who is supposedly more defensively diverse would have better defense numbers than MJ. But nope, this one goes to Michael Jordan as well. On top of his nine-time NBA First Team defensive nominations, Michael led the league in steals three times and also won the Defensive Player of the Year in 1988. LeBron hasn't done any of those. Both players have had extremely impressive resumes in both regular season and postseason play, but let's turn our attention now to the NBA Finals. LeBron has made it to the NBA Finals nine times. Nine times. Nine times. I emphasize those nine trips to the NBA Finals because of those nine times, LeBron only won three of them. Now, on the other side of the argument, Michael Jordan only went to the Finals six times. But do you know how many times he won it? He went six for six in the NBA Finals. I saved you guys the trouble of doing the math there. Three out of nine is the 33.3% win percentage in the NBA Finals, as opposed to Michael 
at a 100% win percentage in the NBA Finals. Do we even go on? Okay, we'll keep going. When it came to winning time, there simply wasn't going to be anyone or any team that could keep Michael Jordan from winning. In a much tougher 90s era of basketball, winning six titles in eight years is a serious accomplishment. Getting past teams like the bad boy Detroit Pistons, Hall of Famers like Magic Johnson and the LA Lakers, Charles Barkley and the Phoenix Suns, Gary Payton and the Sonics, and then John Stockton and Carl Malone of the Utah Jazz twice. Oh yeah, and none of those series ever made it to a game seven. Michael was a killer, and his finals resume speaks for itself. Sure, you're probably saying, hey Hunter, LeBron played some pretty good teams as well. Absolutely he did. The 2016 Golden State Warriors went 73-9, and and LeBron actually beat those guys, which is unbelievable and honestly is his crowning achievement, if you ask me. For the most part, when it comes to winning, you really can't compare LeBron to Jordan. Not to mention all the times we've caught LeBron taking plays off and not giving full effort. Oh, come on! But that's besides the point. There is still one detail from LeBron's finals resume that stands out like a sore thumb. And that's in 2011, LeBron James, your supposed greatest player of all time, was outscored by Jason Terry. LeBron's fans are probably saying, You're a liar! Lie? Me? <laughs> Never. <laughs> the truth is far too much fun. Indeed, the truth is far too much fun. Yes, a role player for the Dallas Mavericks outplayed and outscored LeBron James in the 2011 NBA Finals. And you might be saying, okay, that was one series. But when we're talking about greatest of all time, we have to consider this. Because if you're the greatest of all time, you would never allow a role player who fights to just get minutes on the court to outplay you and really be a difference maker in causing your team to lose a series in the NBA Finals. So I don't really know how that stacks up in this argument. When it came to winning time, Jordan separated himself from everyone else. He got it done. Now, when we're talking about who the greatest player of all time is, in a game like basketball, you cannot separate on-the-court greatness with off-the-court persona. You are held to a higher standard with how you live your life because, let's face it, you're kind of like a hero and really you're measured with how well you handle being that cultural hero and how well you wear that cape that the world puts around the neck of the best basketball player. Both Michael and LeBron played in two very different eras. In the late 80s and 90s, Michael took the league from seemingly insignificant to pop culture frenzy and must-watch television. He essentially woke up the world to the beauty of basketball by pioneering a game that was completely his own. This also ushered in a new world of endorsements and sponsorships that made him bigger than any athlete had ever been before him. Whether it was his infamous Nike Air Jordans or Gatorade commercials, Everyone at that time was saying, Like Mike, want to be like Mike. Though this set the stage for much of the marketing and branding of athletes like LeBron in the future, the social climate of the NBA was much different in the 1990s. Players were much more focused on winning championships than they were with their off-the-court images. Take this quote from Charles Barkley, for instance, in 1993. I'm not a role model. Just because I dunk a basketball doesn't mean I should raise your kids. Without social media, players were, for the most part, mainly concerned with how they played on the court. In ESPN's Last Dance documentary, Michael Jordan went through a slew of criticism in the media when a book was published outlining his intense gambling habits in the early 90s. In an interview, it was said that, perhaps you aren't gambling with only your money. 
You're gambling with your reputation and your good name. Michael responded to this by saying that basically nobody's perfect. Sure, nobody is perfect. But if you are of that elite company to be considered the greatest of anything, the spotlight is shown on you differently than the rest of us. It becomes bigger than just playing basketball because in a sense you are that hero that we as a society look to to drive us forward. If you want to fill that role, I think you are required to be a role model and use your platform to affect change comes with the job. On the other side of the discussion, LeBron James has been everything that Michael has been off the court and then some in potentially a much more delicate media world that we live in today. When asked once what he thought of being a role model, LeBron responded, once you become a professional athlete or once you do anything well, then you're automatically a role model. I have no problem being a role model. I love it. I have kids looking up to me and hopefully I inspire these kids to do good things. LeBron has definitely been a beacon of light to this generation. Being raised by a single mom in Akron, Ohio, few have done what LeBron has done in the way in which he's done it. LeBron is definitely one of my role models. I mean, he's a great dad, he's a fantastic husband, and really takes the mantle that comes with being a cultural hero. The NBA's all-time leading scorer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, weighed in on this discussion by saying, to laud anyone as a cultural hero, that person would also have to embody and promote some of the core values of that culture. LeBron has done that through his outspoken political and social advocacy, especially in support of racial equality. But beyond just talking, he has taken positive actions to better the community and country. This was demonstrated when Fox News' Laura Ingram famously reacted to an ESPN interview with LeBron, which he discussed, among many other topics, politics, by complaining, it's always unwise to seek political advice from someone who gets paid $100 million a year just to bounce a ball. Keep the political comments to yourself and shut up and dribble. Instead of just engaging in a social media war, he turned her lame insult into a three-part documentary series for Showtime called Shut Up and Dribble, which explores the evolving role of athletes in today's divisive political climate. Over the years, LeBron has added his voice to many athletes of conscience who wish to call attention to social injustices in order to eradicate them. But LeBron James is the hero this generation has thrown up on the pop chart. In addition to this quote from one of the game's all-time greats, LeBron founded the I Promise School. The school was founded in his hometown of Akron, Ohio, which is specifically aimed at at-risk children. Of its many features, the school ensures each student free school clothes, three full meals every day, resources for parents, and a promise to every child that graduates through the program for free tuition to Akron Community College. Though we've seen similar things like this, few have followed through quite like LeBron has. So who is the GOAT? At the end of the day, I'm still probably going to pick MJ to win a game for me if my life depended on it, and for me, is the greatest of all time. However, I've grown to love and respect LeBron for who he is to the game and the world. From being simply the kid from Akron to a king. Few have done it better than how LeBron has done it. And his impact on the world will only increase the longer he plays. The beautiful thing about this debate is that it's ongoing and it's not over. LeBron hopefully has many years in front of him and we can hash this one out again in due time. For now though, I think we should appreciate each of their contribution to the game of basketball and the heroes that both of them have been to all of us. Thank you so much for checking out the All Around Athlete YouTube page. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and make sure you also hit that notification bell up top to always stay up to date with All Around Athletes videos. If you guys have ever wondered what it takes to be a better athlete, check out this video right here where we cover the five keys guaranteed to make you a better all around athlete. Until next time, stay healthy, stay active, and always stay athletic.